So you've been creating lots of Linux virtual machines in your home lab environment, and each one of those Linux machines requires some additional configs or even maintenance over time. And if you're tired of remoting in and executing the same tasks over and over and over, let's see if we can use Ansible to automate some of the most common tasks. Hey, welcome back, Swan Techno Tim, and today we're gonna to talk about automating things with Ansible. So we're not doing the same things over and over and over. But real quick, before we get started, if you have a question about anything we cover in this video, check out my live stream. I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about anything, hop in and let's figure it out. Oh, and another thing, thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments because it lets me know if I'm on track. And so, let's get into it. So you've spun up lots of virtual machines in your home lab environment, and many of them are running Linux. And the way that you configure them or maintain them now is remoting in, executing some commands, and then doing that again and again for every single virtual machine you have. And that's fine if you have one or two, but what happens if you have 10, 20? Wouldn't it be nice to just execute one command, sit back and watch it happen? Well, that's where Ansible can give us some help. So Ansible is a powerful automation tool. It can help automate any repeatable task. And the nice thing about Ansible is it's agentless, which means you don't need to install anything on your remote machines. Now I get it, there are a few requirements, but most Linux machines have these and we'll cover those. But with Ansible, you can automate almost anything that you can SSH into. Just think, infrastructure, network, application, containers, security, cloud, you name it. And that's why I think Ansible is so powerful. Because you can automate repeatable tasks in a repeatable way using playbooks. Now I'll be the first to admit that Ansible's new to me. And when I set out to learn Ansible, I wanted to accomplish a few things. I wanted to understand how to get it installed, how to automate some of my most common tasks, and then how to preserve those tasks so I can repeat them in the future. And so I think I have those three things figured out, and that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to do the same thing. So. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do on your local machine is make sure you have access to a Linux-like environment. I'm using WSL on Windows, which gives me an Ubuntu environment locally, but this will also run fine on a Mac and of course Linux. In a quick call out, I'll have documentation that you can find in the description so you can copy and paste these commands. So what's the first command? Well, the first command is we're gonna update our Ubuntu installation. Next, we're gonna install some dependencies. Then we're gonna add an Ansible repository then we're gonna install Ansible. Once Ansible is installed, we can run ansible-version to get some information about Ansible. And here we can see we have Ansible 2.9.6 installed. We can also see some information about our local environment, which it shows which version of Python we have installed, which is a good call out because your servers will need Python installed and they'll need at least version 3.5. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to get Python installed or how to manage your Python versions because there are a lot of ways to do that but you'll wanna be sure that you have at least version 3.5, however you get that installed. The only other requirement you'll need on your servers is just to make sure that you can SSH into those servers. Now, as we all know, there are a couple ways to SSH into your servers. You can SSH in using just a password, or you can SSH in using key-based authentication. Now, Ansible recommends key-based authentication, and I do too, and you should probably set that up. However, I don't want this tutorial to be a non-starter to where now you have to do all of that before you can start Ansible. So I'll cover how to use a password for your servers and then maybe you can use Ansible to automate key-based authentication. So anyways, you'll just wanna make sure that you can SSH into your servers. But let's get out of your server and go back to your development machine. The next thing you'll wanna do is create a file. I'm gonna use VS Code, but you can use any editor you'd like but we're gonna create an inventory file. And an inventory file is just a file to list our servers. It's an inventory of machines that we wanna communicate with. And maybe not important, but this follows the any syntax, so the INI. And that's really just an FYI, you don't need to know much about that. But we'll create a new file called hosts. And you can name this file anything you like. And in this inventory file, we start with an attribute. Now this can be anything you'd like it to be, but it's a grouping for our servers. So I can call this servers, or I can call this Ubuntu. I'm gonna organize mine by operating system, so I'll call this one Ubuntu. And in here, you wanna list all of your servers. 
Now you can list them by DNS name or IP address, either will work, but you want to list all of the servers you want to communicate with in this group. And you can keep your group generic and just call them servers, hosts, whatever you like. But you want a list of all of your servers that you want to communicate with in this group. And then what I typically do is create a folder for this. So I'll create an inventory folder and place it inside of there. And once we have this inventory file, we can actually start executing some commands. And so the command we're going to execute is ansible-i and then we're going to pass an inventory file to it, and that's the inventory file that we created. Then we're going to pass it a group name, and that's right here. This is Ubuntu. That's the group. And then we're going to use the module ping, and we access that module with the dash m. And here's where password authentication comes in. We're going to pass in dash dash user, and that's a user on the server that we can use. And you can see I have my lab environment account. Then we're going to use dash dash ask dash pass. So what this is going to do now is prompt us for a password that we can type in. Now, I get it. I already talked about this. We can use Keybase authentication. But again, I didn't want that to be a non-starter and have you convert all your machines over to Keybase authentication, which I think you should, before you started this tutorial. So this is how we prompt for a password. And if we run this, it'll prompt for an SSH password. We'll type that in and we see lots of errors. That's because we need one more thing. You can see here in the error, it says we must install SSH pass program. So we'll need to install that on our local machine. So we'll need to install SSH pass. And now it's installed. And now we can run that same command, get prompted for a password, and execute this against all of those hosts. And you can see here, it pinged those devices. That device then pinged us back and it even showed us which version of Python we're running. So that's pretty cool. That means Ansible's running. So what do we want to automate now? Well, if you recall from a previous video, I had a list of the top 11 things I do when spinning up a new Linux server. In that video, I was doing them manually, but also what I was doing in that video was defining what I wanted to automate with Ansible. And so from that video, I've extracted a few things that I wanted to automate using Ansible. But before we can automate anything, we can do this a few ways. One, we can use ad hoc tasks. And those are nice for one-off tasks that you do rarely or on occasion or for a few machines. But for the tasks you wanna repeat and maintain, we use playbooks. And so playbooks are a list of plays or tasks that we wanna execute and repeat and maintain. And these can be organized many different ways. So I'm gonna choose the most simple approach, which is creating a folder called playbooks. And in here, creating a playbook that I wanna execute. And when you create that file, you'll wanna use the YAML extension because this is gonna be in YAML syntax. And being that it is YAML, just a quick call out, it is sensitive to spaces and tabs. So get out your trusty T-square ruler when you write this, but it's pretty easy. So the first task or playbook I'm gonna create is one to update my machines. Now all of my machines are Ubuntu, so I use apt. And Ansible has a built-in apt module, which is super handy. And this module has a lot of parameters we can use, and they're all documented on Ansible's site, as well as some common examples. But I'll show you how I update my machines using apt. And so it's this simple. So the first key is host, and I'm gonna say all hosts. The next is called become. Now, this isn't really obvious until you understand what it means. But become in this context for me is gonna mean become a sudoer or become root. And so we'll need to elevate our privileges to execute this task. And what is that task? Well, the task name is apt, and then apt has some parameters too, which I'm gonna tell it to update some cache and then I'm gonna tell it to upgrade all my modules. Now, if we look at what upgrade means, we have some choices here. We can use dist, full, no, safe, yes. But for me, I'm choosing yes because this is the safest way and this doesn't do a dist upgrade. And you can configure this however you like. But this playbook, along with our inventory file, is all we need to go out and update all of our machines. So let's run it. And here's the command we're gonna run. We're going to run ansible-playbook and we're gonna pass ansible-playbook a playbook of app.yaml and that's our apt playbook. Then again, we're gonna pass in the user we're going to use and we're gonna say to prompt for a password 
And then we're gonna say ask-become-pass. And so what that's saying is, hey, when you become a sudoer, ask for the password. That's because on my servers, when you actually type in a sudo command, you have to type in your password as well. And so we'll have a double prompt here, one to connect via SSH and one to actually become a sudoer. And then after that, we're going to pass in an inventory file of inventory slash hosts. And so we should be able to execute this now. First, it's asking for our SSH password. Then it's asking for our become password. Oh, which is nice. <laughs> this must be newer because I don't remember this happening before, but it defaults to your SSH password. Well, let's give that a shot. I'll just hit enter. So now it's gathering facts. So it's going out and communicating with all of our servers. There it goes, it's going, it's going. Now it's gonna execute that task or that playbook apt. And on the servers, it's running an apt update and an app upgrade. And this might take some time depending on how long it takes to upgrade those modules on those remote servers. One of these lab servers I've had off for quite some time. And there we go. Eventually you see they all succeeded. So if we scroll through here, it looks like most of my machines were up to date. Pat on the back for myself, oh, up to date. <laughs> no, that's really because I ran this earlier. But anyways, you can see that one machine, the alpha machine did change. And you can see here that one had some changes. So in this context, it means that this machine had updates and it applied those updates and the other ones are unchanged, but they didn't fail. They weren't skipped and they weren't unreachable. So overall, this one was a success. So let's create another one. So if you remember from my Linux video, most of my Ubuntu servers are virtualized and they're virtualized using Proxbox. And on every virtual machine I spin up, I need to install the QEMU guest agent. So let's create a new playbook. So I'll create a new file called QEMU guest agent.yaml. And in here, I'm gonna do a few things. So I gave this one a name and this is just metadata so I can identify it later. But I said, install the latest QEMU guest agent. And I'm gonna run this on all of my hosts. Then for the name, it's kind of repetitive, but this is install the QEMU guest agent. Now I have a name key twice because I could have a playbook that's full of different plays that have many different tasks. But in my simplified lab scenario, I kind of like to break them up. And so this is gonna run the aptitude module again, and we're gonna install the package called QEMU guest agent. And we wanna make sure that it's, it's present. And we're gonna say update the cache, and we'll need to become root or become a sudoer. And so we'll run almost the same command again, the ansible-playbook. We'll pass it the new playbook, QEMU guest agent YAML, and then the same arguments we used before. So we can execute this, enter our password, default. So it's gonna gather facts again. Now it's gonna try to install the agent and you can see it was successful on all of them. And all of these machines already have the agent installed. But you saw in the last example, what would happen if one didn't? Okay, so we've automated two things. The next one is kind of the same, but as you know, I use Z shell. And so this command is just going to make sure that Z shell is installed on all of my servers. And so this one's very similar to the last, but it's just a different package name. Gathering facts, running the task, and outputting the results. The next task that I typically automate is the time zone, but I also set up my NTP server too. And so I figured I automate those two things, but I'll use a template at the same time. And so let's create a new playbook called time zone. And in this time zone, we're gonna do a couple of things. This one has multiple tasks, what I was talking about earlier. So this playbook is set time zone and configure time sync D. That's because I wanted to point it to my NTP server. And so here I'm gonna say run on all hosts, become root or become a sudoer. And the first task is to set the time zone. And so I set my time zone to America slash Chicago. And I get it, like you should probably use UTC, especially if you're co-located. But all of my lab servers are here in my basement. So, I usually set the time zone so it's a little bit easier for me. I know I'll run into problems if I ever go with a hybrid cloud solution. I don't like doing date math in all of my databases and I'll figure that out later when I get there. Famous last words, right? <laughs> so anyways, the next task, what we're gonna do is actually stop time sync D. And that's because we wanna stop the service before we copy over our template. And I'll include a template here in a second. So we're gonna copy over a file or a template to replace the one that's on that machine. And the file is timesyncd.conf and the destination is going to be timesyncd.conf on the destination machine. And so the template source, we haven't defined yet. So let's create a new folder called templates. 
And in here, I'm gonna paste my timesync conf that I wanna use. And this is one from a machine that I've already configured. And you can see this is pretty typical. So I have this set internally to my own NTP server, and then I fall back to Cloudflare's NTP server. And this can be whatever you like. It's not important. The important part is, is that we're gonna use this to transfer to all of those machines. And so if we go back into our playbook, now we're saying, hey, for the source, go one folder higher, go into the templates folder, and use that file we just created, timesyncd.conf. And on the destination machine, put that in etsy systemd timesyncd.conf. So essentially, it's gonna overwrite that file. And so that's why we need the service dot first, so that we can overwrite this file, and then we're gonna start the service right afterwards. And so that's our next task, is make sure timesyncd is started. And the nice part is we can use this module called systemd, and we can pass in a parameter of the service name, and then pass in a parameter for the state we want, which is started. And so again, really quick, what this is going to do, set a time zone, stop the service, transfer a file, start the service. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna run that same command we've been running, but now we're gonna pass it in our time zone playbook. So let's execute that. It's gonna ask for a password, our become password or a sudo password. Now it's gonna gather some facts. Now it's gonna execute those tasks, the first task, which is set our time zone. The next one, stop the service. The next one, copy over the file. And the next one, start the service back up. And you can see here, it had a lot of work to do. So on all of these servers, we're gonna see changed. Now in a task when we're copying over a template, we'll always see at least one changed. That's because we're copying that file over. But you can see it went successfully. So now on all of these servers, I have the time zone set, I have my NTP server set, and I've updated the timesyncd config with the config that we transferred from my local machine. So this is super awesome. A couple of weeks ago, I knew barely anything about Ansible. I just knew it was an agentless automation tool. And after spending a couple of hours with it and creating all of my playbooks, I realized how powerful it is. And the more I learn about Ansible and the more I use it, I'll organize my playbooks in a more efficient way and probably use some best practices like my SSH keys. But my challenge to you is if you're using a password to write a playbook to automate switching over to key-based authentication. I'd love to see that. And so, what do you think about Ansible? Are you using Ansible at work, at home, in your home lab? Are you using Ansible for more than just servers? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my videos, Hop in my stream and let's figure it out. And so, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Fly human, uh, I, I just my first Dell server. All right, R720. It's overwhelming, <laughs> all the new knowledge I need. I get it, yeah, but uh, start with something you like. Start with something fun. I mean, that's, you know, my very first Rancher video was about a Minecraft server because that was something I thought was fun. And again, it's, you know, it, it, I always try to pair, you know, what I want to do with something, you know, uh, I want to learn. And so for me, it was like, hey, I want to learn about how to get Minecraft. You know, I want to learn about Docker. How do I learn about that? Well, I run a Minecraft server that's not in Docker. Well, that sounds kind of fun. Let's figure that out. So I, I always pair, you know, what I want with or what I want with what I want to learn.